All right guys, today's goal is to annihilate our triceps. I'm gonna take you guys through five of my favorite tricep moves, starting with a move I got from none other than Athlean X. It's such a smart move because it factors in the anatomy of the triceps. It really takes the tricep muscle through a full range of motion. So I'll call it the kneeling tricep rope press down. The big difference on the kneeling tricep extension, you know, at the gym you see a lot of guys do this right here. Notice how my feet are staggered. And we're gonna drive the elbow back behind our body full extension, so just really taking the tricep through a full range of motion. If you're trying to get bigger arms in general, triceps are gonna be two thirds of your arms. I know if you're like me, if you're like most guys, you start going to the gym, you spend a lot more time hitting biceps than you do triceps, but you should, at the very minimum, at least be doing as many sets of triceps as biceps. So the first move is taking the tricep through a full range of motion, really hitting the lateral head, which is right here. It's gonna give the tricep that horseshoe shape, but the long head of the tricep is actually the biggest part of your tricep back here. And the long head of the tricep actually crosses is the shoulder joint. So one really great tricep superset that you can do on the ropes if you have it set up with the first move is just flip around and do tricep overhead rope extension. So and a little pro tip I got from Charles Glass on this move is he would always teach me to imagine like rolling your knuckles out and really focusing on getting that full stretch back. The long head of the tricep crosses the shoulder joint, so really wanna focus on getting that nice full stretch, contraction, roll those knuckles, so a great superset. So we're up to the incline rope extension, and this is probably my favorite tricep exercise. Something about this move, just being locked in on an incline bench, I get the best activation right here on the lateral head. Like I said, that's gonna bring out the horseshoe, which is my genetic weakness with my arms. I try to throw this in, I know it's annoying to set up, but if you have a portable incline bench, you know, put it right around 45 degrees, how you do like say a dumbbell incline press and let me show you guys how to do it. All right guys, we're up to the dumbbell tricep extension. I'm gonna show you the way that Charles Glass taught me and the way that Michael Hearn learned also from Charles Glass. I believe he made a video, if you guys follow Michael Hearn, on literally just about this one exercise, how it was the best tricep exercise ever. And it might not be the best, but it's definitely one of the best because it's gonna take the tricep through a full range of motion, get that nice stretch of the long head, and then on the extension, we're gonna twist those dumbbells. You're gonna hit that lateral head and medial head as well. So set up the bench on a 40 five degree angle. Let's get into set number one. Really get that full stretch, but the starting position isn't right overhead. It's actually stretching back. Get that shoulder flexion, stretch your long head, and then we're twisting the dumbbells. And that twist, you're really gonna feel it on the lateral head. So on this move, I like to go a little heavier than the other ones. I'll try to go eight to 10 rep range. I'll typically do 35 to 40 pound dumbbell range. So you guys might notice I mentioned Athlean X, I mentioned Mike O'Hearn. At the end of the day, I like learning from a wide variety of people. I see a move, I try it. If I really like it, I share it with you guys. So comment down below what other fitness YouTubers you watch. But at the end of the day, if I really like a move, even if I got it from say Athlean X or Ryan Humiston or Mike O'Hearn, whoever it may be, if I like a move and I really feel it, I feel like it's my duty to share it with you guys. So up to the lying tricep extension. This is a great mass building move. Overload the long head of the triceps. And I'm gonna show you guys a little trick to get more out of the end of your set. Easy bar. So the key with this one is really over exaggerate that stretch back. So if you notice what I was doing is I was getting that extra little stretch of the long head and you can almost do that as a finisher where you do, you know, eight clean reps and at the end, get as big of a stretch as you can and you can almost just throw it up over your head, get it back in the starting position, go down slow, get an extra stretch where you can't actually lock out reps anymore because you're so fatigued. Just get more time under tension right on the long head. So last but not least, we got the dumbbell incline kickbacks. Now what I like about this move is you're getting those elbows behind your body. You're getting a great peak contraction of the triceps. Obviously you're taking contraction away throughout the concentric part, but on the kickback, you get a great hard squeeze of the triceps. So I like going light on this going for about 12 to 15. We have 
a very important Q&A session. So I'm just gonna go through some of my favorite questions I got on my social media in the last week and answer them. I think they'll be very helpful to you guys. So someone on Instagram says, how long do you need to train per day? And I thought this was a great question because there really isn't any specific amount of time that's gonna equal results, right? It's gonna be the intensity, it's gonna be your nutrition outside the gym. In theory, you could have a 30 minute workout three times per week, but it could be incredibly intense with compound moves, the right exercise selection. You might get way better results than someone who's in the gym two hours every single day and they're not doing the right moves and they're not doing them with intensity. So someone commented on the video I posted of the rocks leg workout, day off a week question mark, not enough time for recovery, steroids required. This is a huge misconception that you know you can't train six to seven days a week if you're natural. Look, it's gonna come down to your nutrition and your recovery. You could be training four days a week and if your cortisol levels are high, you're getting four or five hours of sleep, you're not eating enough protein, you're not eating carbs and you might feel fatigued to not recover properly from your workouts. You definitely can be all natural and still train hard six days a week. I don't recommend seven days a week, although I've done it in the past. I think six days a week training with intensity on like a push-pull leg split is gonna be a great solution. I'm gonna link down below to an amazing leg day that I did with my friend Cordero in Charles Glass. It will blow up those quads like none other. No games. You ain't with no weights. <laughs>